the infinite energy universe, an hypothesis about the Big Bang, inflation, with a slightly different twist, by Gore Davison. The multiverse could be full of non-vacuum, pure energy, and the visible universe, the place where our stars exist, a bubble in the infinite energy surrounding us. The infinite. Imagine a sea of pure energy. So hot that it has no form. So hot that the energy, even though it is dense, never crystallizes for long into constituent particles that we recognize in our universe. The temperature is greater than 10 to the exponent of 32 degrees Kelvin. At this temperature, the universe is more like a quantum soup with particles of any form existing only for nanoseconds at a time. This entropy is zero at this point, pure energy, which is boundless and dimensionless. Now imagine that sea stretches out forever in all directions. In the sea of energy, infinitely large, fluctuations are occurring everywhere. The energy in local regions is constantly transforming for nanoseconds from one type of particle into another. With this level of heat, nothing is stable. On occasion, bubbles form from quantum fluctuations and inflate to form a structure like our universe. Cosmologists have often wondered, where did this energy come from that made up the Big Bang? The same question could be asked, where did this vacuum come from? It is as easy to accept that the multiverse is one infinitely large sea of energy as it is to accept that it is an infinitely large vacuum of nothingness. After all, one is just the inverse of the other. The multiverse could be full of a non-vacuum pure energy, and the visible universe, the place where our stars exist, a bubble in the infinite energy surrounding us. Bubbles, you say? Have we heard of this before? Watch a pot of water on the stove and see the bubbles form. Why bubbles? Why doesn't the whole pot just heat up? And the hot water rise, making the heat spread evenly throughout. Why bubbles? In water, bubbles are said to be formed by dissolved gases in the water. And when you heat the water, these pockets of gases release from the bond they have with that water. So bubbles in hot water may give us a visual similarity to the kind of bubbles being referred to here, but the cause of the bubbles is somewhat different than the ones that are being proposed that form our universe. Why would bubbles form in a continuous soup of pure energy? Perhaps quantum fluctuations. If enough quantum fluctuations have to occur in one place, this would create a momentary vacuum and could effectively start a cooling seed bubble, which could expand rapidly as the energy around the primary bubble cools and transforms into more stable particles. Quantum fluctuations may have been very important in the origin of the structure of the universe. According to the model of inflation, the ones that existed when inflation began were amplified and formed the seed of all current observed structure. The quantum fluctuations are probably part of entropy. The material that the matter and energy in the universe is made out of would simply be cooled energy, which would occupy less physical space, much less space than the energy it was derived from. Perhaps the space that it occupied grew rapidly because of this decrease in volume and rapidly inflation in the space we see in the known universe. This would leave some questions. How could this bubble form? Bubbles are formed when there's a barrier and a pressure difference. The barrier in our pot of boiling water is formed by the surface tension of the water and the pressure is from the heated expanding gases. The image on the screen shows the basic components of the bubble. PI represents the internal pressure and PO the external. The barrier in a water bubble is the surface tension and the pressure difference, PI minus PO. The formula modeling the structure is linear. See the link that's on the screen. 
for the derivation of the static structure. The radius is equal to 4 times the surface tension divided by the difference in the internal and external pressure. The units of pressure, in our case would be in kilograms per meters second squared. The surface tension is in force per unit length, newtons per meter. Reducing these units to the basics, surface tension is in kilograms per second squared. Note that the der derivation from this mentioned link shows a constant of 2, but we are showing a constant of 4. The difference here is because we are dealing with a sphere in the derivation form, and the link is describing a droplet or half a sphere. The smaller the difference between the inner and outer pressure, the larger the radius of the bubble will be. The greater the surface tension, then the larger the bubble can be. Please note that this formula is a static derived formula for a bubble radius and not the dynamic version. A more detailed study of bubbles and their formation is described in that link also. Looking at the equation for the radius of the bubble, notice that the radius is inversely proportional to the difference between the internal and external pressures. Also when the quantum fluctuation generates a vacuum bubble, which cools the energy surrounding its surface enough to start making particles, we then end up with a situation where the internal pressure, Pi, could become less than the external pressure, Po, therefore generating a negative radius after crossing through an infinite radius. What could this possibly mean? Don't worry, that simply means that the bubble has turned inside out, much like when you turn your sock inside out. But in this case, the inside and the outside look the same. Also notice the extreme increase in size of the bubble with these extremely small differences between the inside and outside pressure. The graph looks like a period of inflation has occurred. This inflationary period would have happened at the very first part of the cooling when the first type of particles were forming, locking up huge amounts of energy into very small volumes. The inflation would have stopped quite abruptly as the pressure difference increased but this pressure difference would have needed to stabilize in order for the inflation to stop and for the bubble not to spontaneously collapse. This is quite a balancing act indeed. Temperature of the energy suit prior to the bubble would be greater than 10 to the 32nd degrees Kelvin. At this temperature, nothing is stable. Quantum particles, the basic building block of our universe, only form for very short periods of time. Entropy is at its smallest value, practically zero. Entropy conceived in thermodynamics is a measurement of disorder stated in energy per unit of temperature. So the units of entropy are in joules per Kelvin. So with a very high temperature, it is conceivable to have entropy of almost zero. During inflation, the temperature in the bubble dropped to about 10 to the 27 degrees Kelvin. This is the approximate temperature barrier that the electroweak crystallized out of the energy suit. The t during this time, inflation runs rampant as the other forces have not separated out. There's no gravity yet. Little attractive forces, so inflation is huge. At 10 to the 15 degrees Kelvin is when all of the four forces appeared separately and stable. The universe as we know it has begun. What could possibly cause the surface tension in this bubble? When particles form, they generate a field. A good analogy of these fields is the magnetic field. In steel, magnetic fields only form when the temperature drops below its Curie point of 1043 degrees Kelvin. Similar properties occur with high energy particles. The field and the related particle will only form once the temperature drops low enough for the particle to crystallize out of the energy soup. If you study the information coming out of CERN, the Council European pour le Research Nucléaire, there is a reference to this document from CERN's archives about this topic, stating, Primordial magnetic fields seem to be a generic relic of phase transition in the early universe. We consider a primordial electromagnetic field formed as a result of a second-order phase transition and show that it is stable to thermal fluctuations in the period immediately following. We also show how such a field arises in first order phase transitions. In both cases, there is a transitive electric field produced during the transition. 
An electric field could act as the barrier generating the surface tension between the high energy soup and the vacuum seed bubble. Why would the system produce a negative radius and hence a negative volume? This may seem strange, but it works out in the math. A negative volume still has positive surface area, as the area is proportional to the square of the radius, so the overall force on the surface is still the same. The negative radius comes from the negative pressure differential, and this is expected to happen once the pressure of the quantum fluctuation gives away to a positive inflation radius, which will generate a vacuum and cool the energy soup. At this point, the pressure differential becomes negative crossing over to the negative side of the equation and inflating there. How does the function pass through infinity? Tunneling. Everything in this known universe is quantized. Therefore, the pressure difference could simply step across the zero due to the quantization of its values and become negative without actually crossing zero. This would allow the formula to tunnel through infinity. Does the known universe support this postulate? For example, inflation, star formation, etc.? It seems to so far. The inflationary period is demonstrated in the mathematics as well as the initial conditions. The expansion of the universe and the continued acceleration showing that the universe is open can also be demonstrated by this postulate. How would matter that fills the universe have gotten into the bubble? When the universe was very small, near Planck's length has a radius, the bubble may have not been perfect due to random quantum fluctuations and bits of material could have seeped through holes produced by this perfect bubble. These bits of energy, or matter, represent huge amounts of matter. Being inside this hole, in the infinite sea of energy, they would have cooled enough to form the basic forces that we know today. These forces would then be able to bond the quarks together to form the nucleic material that makes up the normal matter we see today. Having leaked in through quantum tunneling, they would rotate with very high angular momentum. They would be turbulent. Does this mean that the outer edge of the bubble is farther away than us than the time distance allows at the speed of light, making it invisible? Yes. This theory does not dispute inflation, which gives a reason why the universe could expand at seemingly fast at light speed. It is trying to sp explain how this inflation got started. What is proposed here does not seem to oppose any of the current theories of cosmology except a bang in, in the Big Bang. The, homogene the homogeneity and flatness of the universe during the initial phases would be normal in a sea of super hot energy. The curvature of space being opened is supported by the expansion of the universe due to the pressure difference and the surface tension between our universe and the sea of energy we are in.